Final updates. Whipped up for calling off a wedding because my fiancé is extremely frugal? I am not op. Original post by you, expensive pangolin 60 in R, A I T A H, R, abusive relationships and her user account. Trigger warnings. Financial abuse. Emotional abuse. Trauma. Financial struggles. Neglect. Psychological manipulation. Less than. Mood spoilers. Sad but generally positive overall. Less than. Original Bo R U is here posted by you, Paradoxical State. New updates are from the 4th of July, 2023. WIBTA for calling of a wedding because my fiancé is extremely frugal? Tuesday, June 6, 2023. I-31F struggle with my fiancé's 32M frugalness and not sure if I want to marry him anymore after three. Year relationship. Throw away as my fiancé follows my regular account. I met my fiancé three years ago. He came out of an abusive marriage just two years before we met. One of her absolute abuses was financial. She bled him dry, made him buy expensive jewelry only to give it away or break it after an argument. Designer shoes. Clothes. Big house cars. Caribbean trips. You name it she made him pay for it. She also took him to the cleaners in the divorce. However, my fiancé is very well off. He makes far over six figures almost seven. On top of that he inherited a few millions from his grandfather and his parents gifted him and his siblings also a few cool millions. So yes the financial abuse was bad but he does not suffer financially. He has more money than he will ever need. So last year I moved into his house. I do not pay rent but I split the bills and buy food. I pay for my own clothes and jewelry. I have a good job and I can take care of myself. However things have been taking a turn for the worse and I feel miserable. His house was empty when I moved in. He had hand-me-down furniture. Maybe three forks and two knives. He wouldn't put on the heating so the house felt cold and moldy. He has no curtains. No decorations. His ex took everything not bolted down and he was too cheap to replace it. Just imagine a million dollar house like that. I am grateful that I can live in his house. It is something I could never afford myself. But I didn't want to live in squalor. So I bought some kitchen supplies. Some furniture. But at some point I realized I was dipping in my savings all the time and he did nothing. I looked into curtains but those things are expensive. His house has so many windows it is crazy. I didn't want to pay for this anymore. I told him I needed a fund to furnish his house. He blew up at me that I was just with him for his money. I pointed out all the money I spend on his house. The gifts and the trips because he pays for nothing ever because he wants to be sure I am not here for the money. The fact is, if we break up I have nothing. The house is not mine. If I spend all my savings on his house I will be left with absolutely nothing. He wants a prenup and I am fine with that but I can't help but feel used. Next to that I am jealous of his ex-wife. I feel like she got treated and I am neglected. He proposed to his ex on a cruise with a $10.000 white gold diamond ring. I got the rhodium plated Swarovski stuff that might cost like 100 bucks. The proposal was at a picnic in the park I organized. Paid groceries for enslaved in the kitchen for. I almost said no out of pure disappointment. However I am afraid to bring it up and to be called a gold digger. I don't want to be funding a millionaire's lifestyle. He loves everything as long as I pay for it. As soon as he has to pay it is frivolous. Unnecessary. I can live like a poor person by myself. At least the fact there are literal millions lying around doesn't hang over me to bum me out. And I would just be paying for my own lifestyle. WIBTA for calling of a wedding purely for financial reasons because I love this man. But I imagine our cheap wedding in contrast to his ex her extravaganza. 
Will our future kids be able to have some luxuries? Or only if I pay for it? What if I ever become a stay-at-home mom? Will I have to beg to put the heating on? Edited to answer questions I see a lot. I know the abuse is not made up. His family and friends told me separate stories of the abuse they witnessed. Not only did it confirm it, it showed me she was way more terrible than I thought. Like stealing heirloom jewelry of his grandma with Alzheimer right after she was widowed. Pretending she was gifted these things even though everyone knew grandma hated her guts. I did not realize or see he is doing the same to me as she was to him and he is. Subconsciously. Punishing me for what was done to him. I am not trying to force a lifestyle in him where he was previously happy in. He told me prior to moving in that he left his house like this because he was depressed after his wife took everything, even the curtains, that it makes him sad and he wants a cozy home. He just didn't know where to start. His house is paid off. Thanks to granddad. He isn't actually spending much on utilities either. House is very well isolated and has solar panels. It is weird to see how cheap being rich really is. I am not asking for designer furniture. Ikea all the way and I have refurbished second-hand furniture myself. I am actually pretty thrifty. I see where my jealousy over the Xer lifestyle might have triggered some people. Let me explain. A $10.000 ring is insane and stupid to me. I do not want that because I would fear for losing it every day. I don't need an over-the-top wedding. However. It almost feels like for her he did effort. Wanted to give her what made her happy. Put effort and thought in it. With me it almost feels like he wants to prove how little he can give me. He talked about how he would see the wedding and it is cheaper than my actually financially. Struggling cousin her wedding. I can't help but feel he wants to demonstrate how cheap he can treat me. And I already feel embarrassed about the family that would have been to both and I will feel like the discount wife. I don't like to say it but it feels like he gets of on it to some extent. We are almost talking washing paper plates at this moment. Yes I did discuss selling the mansion I really don't need and move to a more modest house. Especially knowing this is the house his ex picked. He doesn't want to do that. He loves this house. But I feel really intimidated living in a house I could never afford anyway. And so many large windows. Tish. I haven't talked to him yet but pows on the marriage and counseling is a must. I already am looking for IC because I realized I might indeed be too much of a people pleaser. Allowing him to control me with the ghost of his ex. I also am going to separate for a while. I am looking to rent something for a few months so I can get some space. Thank you all for your insights. Notable comments. Senior Day. NTA. I understand you've had some trauma in your past and I'm sorry you went through that. But I can't allow you to mistreat me because of it. It burns me up inside that you gave her everything. But I have to beg for the bare minimum. I deserve to feel cherished by my partner. As I have cherished you. Oop. Oomph that hit me right in the feels. Moth girl, 7. Replying to add on to the above statement. I am not with you because of the money you have. And if you can't trust that then that's something you need to work on. I cannot live without heat. Furniture. Curtains. And basic decency just to prove to you that I am not a financial abuser like your ex. It feels as if you are projecting that image onto me and that is unfair. His way of coping is extremely unhealthy. What he should be doing is talking to a therapist about how he can communicate his needs to you. Not shutting you out and behaving the complete opposite of how he did with this ex. He should set some healthy boundaries on how he spends his money. Sure. But he also needs to acknowledge that you asking for some financial contribution to the house you live in isn't the same as his ex demanding he take her on a cruise. He needs to find some ways he can feel appreciated when he does spend money on things you benefit from. 
and he needs to trust that he is in full control of his money. You have no desire to take that from him. Update. WIBTAH for calling of my wedding because my fiancé is extremely frugal set. June 10, 2023. Originally posted to our AITAH, but was removed by the mods. Preserved on user's account. Okay I hope this update makes sense because I am very confused and not really doing that well at the moment. Well Reddit you changed my life. Thank you so much for all your ideas and insights. Honestly I don't think I would have had the courage to do what I did without you guys. I went to therapy took the day off just to get my racing mind to calm down. Therapy has confirmed things you guys suspected. I am a people pleaser. I wanted to save him and I have internalized the idea that any effort and every penny I want him to spend on me makes me a gold digger. I will have weekly sessions to work on me. I realized I would have never taken this treatment from any of my exes. Even though I made more than them. The idea I had to prove myself worthy to be with a millionaire and not be in there for the money got into my head pretty early. I called one of his siblings I am pretty close with and just told her everything. She was not surprised but just sad about how unhappy he was making me. She told me that from the day we started he had this idea that I was out of his league. He struggled to understand why I wanted to be with him and he probably just thought it must be my money. She told me she already talked to him in the past to treat me better. She was furious about the proposal. This information confused me a little. I was a little hurt she never discussed any of this before but she thought it was none of her business. She also explained how she and her husband organized their finances. He also doesn't have as much as her. I took the opportunity to pack a bag. I haven't then found a place yet but I am going to stay with my parents. I made up my mind that I will at least want six months apart to get myself in order. I made sure my stuff was in the car because honestly I had no idea how the conversation would go. So into the most difficult part. The talk. I waited for him to come home. He was pretty late but I didn't want to sleep another night on this. Pretending I was fine while I was contemplating all this just ate me up. I had written down what I wanted to say. I have never been so scared before. I didn't want to hurt him and I didn't know how he would react. I took some advice from here. I opened that I was moving out and that I wanted to pause our engagement. He was very quiet and just sat down. I told him he really hurt me by calling me a gold digger and that I am done walking on eggshells and feeling guilty for just wanting basic things. I told him I was unhappy and felt neglected. I also told him that after three years of me showing up for him he still doesn't think I am here for him. It is not going to happen. He was just quiet. He didn't say anything. I told him that the constant comparing to his ex was unhealthy and unfair. Punishing me for her sins was abusive. I told him comparing her to me all the time has triggered me comparing myself to her and starting to feel like she was worth more than me. One of the things about her was mostly ungratefulness. He would do nice things for her but it was never enough. The thing is, he doesn't do nice things for me and I have to be grateful for the pleasure of picking up the bill. I told him he was not ready for marriage. That I dreaded having kids with him and live like this. That is didn't trust he would take care of me if I would become a psalm. And at that point I just called him abusive and a user. I was getting pretty angry saying all this out loud. Losing my composer and script a little bit. He remained quiet with almost no emotion on his face. I stayed quiet but nothing came out so I decided that I would just leave. Only when I got up to go he said please don't go. He asked me if I was pausing the wedding or calling it up. He wanted to know if it was over or if he still had a shot. I told him I wanted out of this house. I honestly don't want to live in his ex her palace of sadness anymore. I needed him to go to therapy and especially financial therapy. I needed a separation. 
I told him I was open to couples counseling if he went into IC. He begged me not to do the separation but honestly I really really wanted it. I just told him to think about it and I left him. He was finally showing some emotions. He was crying at this point. He sent me a very long text somewhere in the AM. Told me he was a wreck and couldn't sleep. He made all kinds of promises. He would go into therapy. Sell his house. Buy a smaller one and make sure I am taken care of whatever happens. He said he would help me decorate and we will make a home. He again asked me to please come home. But to me it doesn't feel like home there anyway. I feel very empty and tired. I have been sleeping most of the day. I feel guilty but also a little bit relieved if that makes sense. I don't know if I actually want back if he does all that. IDK I am a little unsteady right now. I need some time to process. I will go back for the kitchen supplies and my TV. I won't take anything else of the furniture. This for the exact same reason I was unwilling to buy everything. His house is huge so the couch is huge. I can't take it. New updates start here. Update 2. WIBTAH for calling of my wedding because my fiancé is extremely frugal Tuesday. July 4, 2023. Hi everybody. Let me just say I am overwhelmed by the number of people really caring about me and asking for updates. Strangers who care about you is a feeling like no other thank you. So as I said I left. I am looking for an apartment I can afford. My parents are helping out. I am living with them and saving up. I am not closing all doors but as for now we are broken up. I have no contact. The first week he transferred a large amount to my account. It really rubbed me the wrong way. It just showed me that he still thought that money was what kept me here. I deducted the couch I left and transferred everything else back I asked for no contact after this. He has been respectful of it and I feel free at the moment. I felt guilty for my needs. For wanting to be taken out every once in a while. The longer I am out the harder I realize it was abuse. I have an autoimmunity problem and the cold house caused it to flare up. Even after that he kept turning the heat down. He rather have me miserable than pay what? $100 extra in the end of the year? The last thing I heard is that he put the palace of sadness on the market. I have seen the ads so happy he is going through with that. I heard of his sister that he is in therapy. I am happy for that and I hope he keeps that up. He is keeping his promises so far but I need to see real change and even then I really don't know. I am building my own life by myself. Thinking about getting a puppy. If I give him another shot. It has to start all from scratch. I want to start dating again and take it slow. Therapy is really a good idea. I now know I was just bringing this on myself as a people pleaser. Savior. Wanting this man to be happy so bad I forgot about myself. Never again. So that is all there is to say really. Comments. Girl with dragon tattoo. Best of luck. Please never forget your worth again. Because others will shortchange you if so. Oop. True. I allowed this from day one and let him play his fantasy revenge on me. The red flags were there so early. Loving ourselves is the key to a happy life. Summer flip. My question is. Did you previously communicate your feelings before just ending it? Did you wait until you stopped loving him? Oop. I did. Multiple times. I had a few breakdowns where I told him I was unhappy especially when my autoimmunity disease just kicked into high gear I told him I was done being cold. Then the discussion started about what is cold and I had to negotiate a temperature setting he was okay with. He would still turn it down behind my back. The curtains were just the last straw for me. He was giddy and happy about all other changes I made to his home with my money I thought it would. Not be so weird to ask him to pitch in right? I had done so much. Sacrificed so much and he still blew up at me? What kind of gold digger pays for everything for three years? 
If I was one I was really bad at it so yes I communicated. Over and over and nothing changed. I am pretty shocked he is actually doing something right now but honestly I think it is a little too late. I don't want to shut the door completely but I will never ever be cold in my life ever again. Financially abusive fiancé. It's over for good. My final update tour. September 21st, 2023. Thank you for everyone reaching out to me. I have closed in on a little apartment for myself. I got a puppy. After being in a home where I was truly loved. My parents I realized how sad. Cold and alone I had been. Over time I went blind for a lot of things. Blind to a comfortable home temperature. Comfortable with thinking about every penny spent. Feeling guilty for buying that dress I wanted for so long that was finally on sale. Feeling entitled for wanting date nights. Being treated sometimes. I started to think about what makes me happy. I love to travel. Dress up to go to a nice restaurant. Throw dinner parties. Entertain people. Think about Christmas gifts six months in advance. Have a cozy house. And I realized just how much he had taken from me with that one little sentence. Is that really necessary? Is anything ever? If you have a roof, food, bed and a TV you are there right? Is travel necessary? Is having nice clothes necessary? Is a shower necessary? A haircut? A party? A hobby? A wedding? No. I know now that abusers are not per definition bad people. He is broken and he has trauma I have no time or energy for. He got free from abuse and decided to become the abuser. I know he is in therapy and we initially agreed on six months no to low contact. But I felt I was certain it was not for me anymore and I didn't want to keep him dangling. Breaking up with him was very hard. It made me very sad. I never wanted to hurt him and I loved this man very deeply. I wanted us to be each other's happy ever after. We both came from dark places and I wanted us to thrive together. His family told me I was the one. I was everything he was looking for and I felt so lucky. But we only have one life and he has so much work to do before he even becomes the bare minimum of what I needed. I feel failed. Like my story has a bad ending. I feel very broken and sad. I will take my time to just be me. I hope he does the same. I truly hope he finds the one and becomes happy. Mostly I hope that for myself but for now I am enough by myself with the pupper. Thank you all for your time and support. I am going to have a little cry in some fur baby's fluffy fur. Comments. Nola Cat 94 This is so far from a bad ending. A bad ending would have been staying until nothing was left of you. A bad ending would have been him bleeding you dry and you being stuck. You put yourself first and that will always be good. And to add to the positivity. This is probably the kick he needed to get past his trauma. Oop. I think you are spot on. He has said these things himself. He didn't know how bad he was until he came home to me leaving. He has told me he hates himself for letting me walk and letting me be this miserable. He is in therapy, as far as I know because I am number contact. And I hope he does well. I really felt once I was out how much of myself was lost I went through quite a dark time realizing how far I went for this man. But I am getting better. Zesty Lemon Asparagus. It does feel like a sad ending. I get the sadness of knowing the magical ending wasn't going to happen. Of the hope that he would see the light and make the changes he needed to in order to make you feel valued. But at the end of the day it's a happy ending as well. You have a puppy who loves you and he demonstrated through his anger that he still holds his values of stinginess higher than he holds you. So you don't have to wonder. This really really feels like the ending of Inside Out, where a core memory comes in and it is a mix of joy and sadness. And sadness isn't bad. Sadness helps us remember what is important. You are important. I'm happy for you that you have been able to connect with the things that bring you joy and surrounded yourself with them. But, 
Please stay open. I know you have joked that you are fine being single forever. And if that is the course of your life, then that's all well and good. Being single doesn't mean lonely as you truly know while you entertain in your apartment. Guard yourself against become a version of your ex in the same way he became a version of his ex. Not that you would abuse others but that you would abuse yourself by closing yourself off from people to keep yourself safe. You deserve that joy and all the happiness in the world. Oop, thank you. I will be open to someone again but only when it comes out of a place of, wow this person is something else, not interested in anything else. I know now I ran past several red flags just because this man could give me the life I dreamed of. Married, nice house, some kids, a life with no worries. But he was not that man. He has sent me letters upon letters how sorry he is. Taking accountability. But I can't anymore. I just don't want to try again. I hope he does well for himself. He is in therapy and doing his best. I hope he is happy one day. I just don't want to be part of it anymore. So yes it is no Disney ending. But it is also not my ending. It is a real beginning. OK Act 8736. He's now taking accountability? Last time he was angry at you for not respecting what Zhe can do with his money. Oop. Yep he is very sorry about that. He doesn't know why reacted like that. He is ashamed about it. Money suddenly doesn't matter to him anymore. These are all things in his texts letters and phone calls. But it has been a while since I have had contact with him. Even if he changes a lot now. My question is. Why couldn't he do that then? I got sick. When I got sad and told him I was unhappy. Why can he only change when he is in pain because I left? That says it all. I really hope he finds himself and that he will be happy in the future but I don't want to be part of it anymore. Reminder I am not the original poster. Even if he changes a lot now. My question is. Why couldn't he do that then? I got sick. When I got sad and told him I was unhappy. Why can he only change when he is in pain because I left? I'm glad Oop can see this. Good for her. Looking at this post it's like why did he think her being with him for so long wasn't enough to prove it? Because he didn't think she would leave him. He was willing to punish her for being with him up until she decided her love wasn't enough to stay. The minute her health came into the equation, he should have bent his rigid line of thinking. But he didn't care. Her health didn't affect him. Her needs didn't affect him. Just her availability. He didn't care until she left him because now it was affecting him. Even if he changes a lot now. My question is. Why couldn't he do that then? I got sick. When I got sad and told him I was unhappy. Why can he only change when he is in pain because I left? Oop has hit on the core issue. That he was only ever going to actually put in the effort to change once there were consequences. For him. She'll be better off without him. I will never understand why partners go the extra mile to make changes asked of them. After a breakup. Oop will be okay. Dude has too much money for his own well-being. Imagine living your life defined by your unwillingness to use your resources. This is sad but I'm so happy she got out. People who can't process relationship trauma often do this. They test their new partner. Over and over. But it's never enough. Only after the partner leaves do they realize what they lost. One standard I've held throughout my life is a refusal to be punished for things I didn't do. In OOP's situation. I wouldn't stay if all this man would do is react. Well. Not even the way he should have in his previous marriage. Because this is excessive. He was punishing Oop for his own lack of spine. Don't stay with someone who won't own or work on their baggage. Hurt people hurt people. Never been more true than this case. 
Almost all abuse stems from some kind of trauma. Not all abuse. And it certainly never excuses or justifies it. But it's rare that we get to see such a clear cause and effect. Damn good job to the oop. Dude literally let the one get away cause his head was too far up his own rear end to see it. He doesn't care about her. He just doesn't want to have to do things alone and for himself. She suffered and he caused it. He could have changed before all of this. But he's acting now when he is affected by the consequences. Her leaving. They could never be happy together. Three years of unhappy memories don't just go away. And he would always overspend, just in case. But I wish the best for both of them. He should probably only date in his tax bracket. To not fight uphill next time. Therapy can only do so much. Not that rich people can't be greedy. Lol. The opposite. She also took him to the cleaners in the divorce. He inherited a few millions from his grandfather. And his parents gifted him and his siblings also a few cool millions. And still has a seven-figure house. So, sounds like she didn't take him to the cleaners at all. I think she's sad she couldn't save him. Which shows she also has a long way to go with her own therapy. But this is the best outcome for both of them. Palace of Sadness is hilarious. I read somewhere that men are EVERTHING diggers. They don't just want money. They want your time, energy, attention, sex, chores, cooking, children, care, affection, emotional labor, free everything from women. That really struck me as true in this case. He took her money and everything else. I wanted us to be each other's happy ever after. They might not be each other's happy ever after but I hope them both the best and find their own. Happy ever after. Good for her for leaving, but she should have kept that money. I disagree with Oop that this is a sad ending. I don't think it is. Yes. She won't be with her ex anymore. But she learned an important life lesson and she came stronger out of this. And learned to love herself. Honestly. Op really hit the nail on the head with that last comment. It's great that he decided to work on himself and change. But that just makes it all the more obvious that he was always capable of making that effort. He just never had the desire to. Her sickness and her unhappiness weren't motivation enough because he still had it good with her. Paying for everything and caving to his every whim. Things were fine as far as he was concerned. The catalyst for his change wasn't her pain. It was him no longer getting what he wanted. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epic Aircast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.